Hello, and welcome to my channel called Statistics from A to Z, Confusing Concepts Clarified. These videos are based on content from my book of the same name, which is published by Wiley. For more information on the book and these videos, please visit statisticsfromatoz.com. In inferential statistics, we don't have all the data from a population or a process. So we perform statistical tests on a sample or samples of data. The two main methods of inferential statistics are hypothesis testing and confidence intervals. And there are four statistical concepts which are at the heart of inferential statistics. P, the p-value, alpha, the level of significance, test statistic, and critical value. In the book, there are individual articles on each of these four concepts, and I plan to do individual, individual videos on each of them as well. This is the third. There will also be a video on how these four concepts interrelate and work together, which is something I think is lacking in most books and videos. For the latest status on videos completed and planned, see the videos page on the book's website. As usual in the book and in these videos, we'll start with a list of keys to understanding, or KTUs, and then we'll go into detailed explanations of each key. The first key to understanding is, a critical value is derived from the significance level alpha and the probability distribution of a test statistic like Z, T, F, or chi-square. The second KTU is, in inferential statistics, comparing a test statistic, for example Z, to its critical value, Z critical, is statistically the same as comparing the p-value to alpha. The third key to understanding is, critical values are used in defining the boundaries of confidence intervals. And here on one page are the three cues to understanding the concept of critical value. You may want to pause the video at this point and read them all together. Let's now begin our detailed explanation of each key to understanding. KTU number one says, a critical value is derived from the significance level alpha and the probability distribution of a test statistic like Z, T, F, or chi-square. There are two concepts in that KTU that we'll need to explain before going further. Alpha, denoted by the Greek letter, is called the significance level or the level of significance. And secondly, test statistic and its probability distribution. Let's first address the concept of alpha, the significance level. In order to understand alpha, we need to first understand the concepts of alpha error and p, the p-value. Alpha error is also known as type 1 error, or false positive. It is the error of concluding that there is a statistically significant difference, change, or, re or effect, when in reality there is not. So, it is the error of rejecting the null hypothesis when the null hypothesis is true. There is a separate article in the book on alpha and beta errors, and there is, or will be, a separate video. P, the p-value, is the probability of an alpha error. And alpha, the significance level, is the highest value of, for p, which we are willing to tolerate and still call a statistical test's result statistically significant. P and alpha are two of the four concepts at the heart of inferential statistics, which have their own videos in this video's playlist, in addition to having their own articles in the book. Next, let's address the concept of test statistic. There are four commonly used test statistics, Z, T, F, and chi-square. There are separate articles in the book, and there are or will be separate videos on the overall concept of test statistic 
as well as for each of the four test statistics. Each test statistic has its own probability distribution or distributions so that for any value of the test statistic on the horizontal axis, we know its probability. Or for any range of values, we know the cumulative probability of that range of values. Here we have a graph of the probability distribution of the test statistic Z. Z's distribution is the standard normal distribution. We can see that the point probability of Z equals zero is around 0 0.4 or 40%. We could also calculate the cumulative probability of a range of values, say the range from Z equals two through infinity. Cumulative probabilities are calculated as the area under the curve above the range of values. P and alpha are both cumulative probabilities. Now let's illustrate how alpha and the test statistic distribution define the critical value. The person performing the analysis selects a value for alpha, 5% in these two concept flow diagrams. If the test is to be one-tailed, that is right-tailed or left-tailed, then the full 5% cumulative probability is plotted as one shaded area under the tail of the curve of the probability distribution of a test statistic, z in this example. Since z is a test statistic, we can calculate it or look up in a table the value of z, which forms the boundary of a 5% cumulative probability area under one tail. For the right-tailed test in the top diagram, z equals 1.645. For a left-tailed test, it would be negative 1.645. These are critical values. The second concept flow diagram shows a two-tailed test. Alpha is divided in half and 2.5% is placed under each tail. This gives us critical values of negative 1.96 and positive 1.96. For more on tails of the tests, see the book article or the video on alternative hypothesis. Key to understanding number two says, in inferential statistic, statistics, comparing a test statistic, for example, Z, to its critical value, Z critical, is statistically the same is comparing the p-value to alpha. Let's say we are using z as our test statistic, and we select alpha equals 5% as our level of significance, and it's a right-tailed test. Then the critical value of z must be 1.645. Conversely, if we were told that the critical value was 1.645, and we are using z as our test statistic, and it's a right-tailed test, then we can calculate or look up the value of alpha, and we will find it to be 5%. So alpha and critical value contain the same statistical information. They just communicate that in different ways. You can use either one. Alpha is a cumulative probability pictured as an area under the curve. Critical value is the point on the horizontal axis of the test statistic, which forms the boundary for the shaded area alpha. Similarly, given a test statistic distribution, the p-value and the test statistic value contain the same statistical information. With p, that information is conveyed as a cumulative probability pictured as an area under the curve of the test statistic distribution and the test statistic value is the point value way of conveying that same information. First, the test statistic value, z in this example, is calculated from the sample data. The formula for doing this varies by the test statistic used and the type of test. This gives us a point value for z, which we can plot on the horizontal axis of the test statistic distribution. For a right-tailed test, 
we calculate that the area under the curve from that point rightward to infinity. And if the point value z is calculated to be 1.2, then the cumulative probability p is calculated to be 11.5%. Since the point values and the cumulative probabilities contain the same information, comparing either the cumulative probabilities or their associated point values is statistically identical. We can do either one. Note that the comparison symbols, the less than and greater than signs, point in opposite directions for the point comparison versus the cumulative probability comparison. This is because they're in, in, there is an inverse relationship with, between the test statistic and p. This table shows close-ups of the right tail of the distribution of the test statistic t. Off the chart to the left is the center of the distribution where t equals zero. The hatched area represents p. It is bounded by the test statistic point value t. In the top row middle column, this area representing p is relatively large. It is larger than the shaded area representing alpha. To have a larger area representing p, t must be closer to zero, which is on the left. t must be smaller. This is illustrated in the seesaw graphics in the third row. A high value for p requires a low value for t. Conversely, in the right column, the hatched area representing p is relatively small. This is because t is farther to the right, farther from zero. The seesaw effect in the second row illustrates the fact that a lower value for p corresponds to a higher value for t. The rest of this table illustrates what these comparisons mean in terms of rejecting or failing to reject the null hypothesis. If we call the white area under the curve the failed to reject region and the shaded area representing alpha the rejection region, then if p is larger than alpha, it encroaches into the fail to reject region, and t being small is less than t critical. When this happens, we fail to reject the null hypothesis. If p is less than alpha, then the hatched area representing p is contained entirely within the shaded rejection region, so we reject the null hypothesis. This happens when t is greater than t critical. Key to understanding number three says critical values are used in defining the boundaries of confidence intervals. Confidence intervals can be used instead of hypothesis tests in inferential statistics. Earlier, we showed a concept flow diagram which illustrated how our choice of alpha, together with a test statistic distribution, gives us critical values. That's the top part of this diagram. This diagram shows how critical values in turn can lead to a confidence interval. A sample of data is collected. In this example, we collect heights in units of centimeters. A sample statistic is calculated. In this case, we are interested in the sample mean, symbolized by x with a bar on top. It is calculated to be 175 centimeters in this example. To make use of the critical values in the real world, we need to convert the test statistic values into real-world units. There are different formulas for doing this for different test statistics and different tests. Here, the one for z is relatively simple. Converting critical values into real-world units gives us the upper and lower confidence limits of 170 and 180 centimeters. These define the confidence interval. There are separate book articles and there is or will be a separate video for the concept of confidence intervals. That concludes our discussion of the concept of critical value. As I said earlier, this is the second of five related videos on four central concepts in inferential statistics and how they work together. Depending on when you view this video, they either are or will be available on my YouTube channel. 
you can view the status of videos completed and planned on the videos page of the book's website, statisticsfromazcom slash videos. That's it for our clarification of this confusing concept. If you liked this video, please remember to press the thumbs up like button on your screen below. I'll be making more videos of some or most of the 60 plus concepts in the book if folks like you tell me that more videos are wanted. Please subscribe to this channel to be notified when new videos are uploaded. Also, the website statisticsfromazcom has a listing of available and planned videos. Now, videos like this one can be very helpful, but they're not very handy when you want to quickly look up something on the job while studying or during an open book exam. For that, nothing beats a book or an ebook. You can also learn more about those on the website. I'd recommend following my blog at statisticsfromazcom slash blog. I've got some things there that hopefully you will find interesting, like a statistics tip of the week series, as well as posts showing that you are not alone if you're confused by statistics. I'll also be posting on the Facebook page, Statistics from A to Z, and Twitter as at Stats A to Z. Till next time, I'm looking forward to communicating.